This month marks the one year anniversary since Elon Musk bought Twitter. Ad revenue has dropped over 50%. Almost a third of the users have left the site. The SEC is investigating Elon Musk's purchase of the site and the banks that lent him the money to buy it a year ago are scrambling to offload the billions in debt he still owes them. Guys, I think it's time to finally call it. I think Twitter's finally done. In February 2022, when Russia invaded Ukraine, I wrote a piece called Everything Will Be All the Time and Everywhere, where I essentially use social media, but mainly Twitter, to construct a ticking clock of the first hours of the invasion. And while I was able to make some sense of the noise online, I still concluded at the time that our feeds aren't meant for content like this, and they were breaking. And a year and a half later, those feeds are completely broken. As an exercise, I've been trying to keep track of what I see online with regards to what's happening with Israel and Palestine right now. And it's been, of course, totally impossible to follow anything. My understanding of what's going on has not just been muddled by platforms like X, formerly Twitter, but it's been warped entirely. I know more about adult film star Mia Khalifa being canceled for tweeting that Hamas should shoot their videos horizontally, or right-wing influencers like Ben Shapiro and Andrew Tate arguing with each other about who's tough enough to go fight in Gaza, or undeniably racist posts from verified losers, than I do about anything material that's happening on the ground. I've seen so much content reported and debunked and rebunked, if that's a thing, that I think I've reached the limits of my mind's ability to understand reality. As Mashable's Matt Binder posted the other day, nearly everything that's gone viral on Twitter over the past few days has been wrong. One of the main reasons why everything on X feels so bad right now is because of the change in the incentives for its users. And one of the best examples for how these incentives have changed is something I call viral meme dumps. And I think it's a perfect example of how when Elon Musk brought in paid verification, along with user monetization, it broke the platform, which before then was primarily powered by conversations. Here's how one of these verified meme dumps starts. Earlier this month, a verified meme account called Insults Rare, which mostly posts just old viral screenshots, shared this on X. The post received 17 million views, about 14,000 retweets, and around 500 replies. But the replies aren't what you'd normally see on Twitter pre-Elon Musk's takeover. Instead, they're almost exclusively from other verified accounts who aren't even attempting to actually reply to the post. This is especially pronounced on mobile, which is more aggressive about promoting verified replies. The majority of the replies underneath this post, and many posts like it that I've seen, are just completely random memes. And even weirder, some of the replies underneath this tweet appear to be trying to start their own viral meme reply thread. Like this post, which I found in the replies from a verified cricket fan account called SammyX39. How rude. Imagine you're trying to post weeks old Reddit memes to grind away a couple Elon bucks and someone starts doing a viral prompt thread inside of your replies. And the only real theme you could even claim that the majority of these off topic replies have is that they're sorta kinda related to sex and relationships, which explains the amount of sex workers that are also replying to the thread. There's also a meme in the thread from a verified account impersonating the boss baby that is, well, certainly not something the real boss baby would tweet. Now, there's a couple trends from the pre-Musk Twitter that this reminds me of. The first are viral black Twitter threads, where it was common to see replies that were full of funny reaction GIFs and later video clips and memes. And the second thing this reminds me of is tweet decking. Basically, novelty accounts would post low effort content and then use a network of connected novelty accounts to mass retweet it. And I'm sure that many of the accounts meme dumping in the insults rare thread are owned by the same person or people. 
And in the case of a viral black Twitter thread, the point was to use memes and GIFs and videos to enhance the conversation. While with tweet decking, the point was to create the illusion of a conversation. And none of that is happening anymore. Back when Twitter was Twitter, the incentive was to be funny or interesting or informative, and you would get retweets and likes, which if you gained enough, you might get a media job or a book deal or get laid. On X, Musk's pay-to-play model of virality has turned the site into an environment of pure capitalism, where conversation simply gets in the way. And this is having a particularly disastrous effect during the current conflict in Israel and Palestine. Okay, let's uh, jump back just a little bit here. The main framework most websites use for moderating user-generated content really didn't start until around 2014, after 4chan's massive leak of non-consensual sexual material, which was dubbed the fappening. And it was really formalized in 2015 with the rise of ISIS and in 2016 when Facebook launched a fact-checking division and acknowledged that Russia's disinfo factory, the Internet Research Agency, was using the platform to meddle in foreign elections. And so one by one, major corporate platforms began to accept that they had a responsibility and a duty to protect users from spam, scams, misinformation, and disinformation, harassment, abuse, illegal and malicious material, and extremism. And they, of course, failed to uphold that responsibility time and time again. But they would often send a former Obama staffer on their payroll to go talk to journalists and issue some kind of non-apology every time their technology caused a genocide or something, which I always thought was, you know, nice. We now know that the moderation these companies kept promising more of via sophisticated AI tools were actually just human labor being performed in literal sweatshops in countries like Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa where workers make dollars a day viewing the worst content humanly imaginable until they psychologically can't take it anymore. Which is an experience that Musk, in his infinite business acumen, is now providing to any ex-user that accidentally clicks on the apps for you tab. Or worse, he's outsourced misinformation to the wannabe Wikipedia editors running his community notes feature, which completely broke during the beginning of this current conflict with Israel and Palestine. It seems like these companies were only ever going to clean up their platforms to a point. And as we're now learning here in 2023, that was only temporary. Musk recently shut down an internal misinformation tool called Smite and liquidated X's election integrity team. And Meta's Threads doesn't even have one. YouTube and Meta have also largely given up on moderating conspiracy theories. The only institution that's still in the moderation game, it seems, is the European Union. An EU commissioner served Musk with a letter earlier this month, giving him 24 hours to comply with a request for information on how Twitter is upholding the EU's Digital Services Act, which has strict rules for how platforms have to handle misinformation and extremist material. And Musk is trying to bait the EU into publicly posting out a list of the violations it thinks X has allowed, most likely because he knows his supporters will dogpile the EU officials. So not only are incentives on X broken, but moderation is pretty much broken there and everywhere else right now. And this is where you say, so what? It's the internet. It's always been this bad. If you care about what's really happening, go read a newspaper or something. But the problem with that is that it's not just you and me who are on these sites. Some very important people are still using these sites, even though they are absolutely broken. The Atlantic Council's Emerson T. Brooking recently tweeted, Boo hoo, Twitter's dead, whatever, except X remains the preferred platform for policymakers and what they believe affects millions. When Musk bought Twitter a year ago, I naively believed that users, especially IRL important ones, would react to the increasing noise on their feeds by simply leaving the platform. And if my own following tab on the app is any indication, many have. But what has actually happened is much more dangerous. Instead of X dissolving into some kind of digital backwater for divorced guys with NFT debt, it has instead continued to remain at the top of the digital funnel while also being 4chan levels of rotten. It's still being used to process real-time events by users all over the world, even though it doesn't have the leadership, the moderation, the tools, the incentives necessary to handle that. The inmates are running the asylum, and to be honest, there's nothing on the horizon that makes me think that this is gonna get better anytime soon. I don't wanna get too doomer, you know, as always in these videos, but the 
public digital spaces that we've relied on for 15 years aren't going to magically get better. And the main tactic for putting pressure on these companies, something I did for many, many years, and I guess still do, try to at least, is reporting on the problems with their trust and safety or their moderation or pointing out every time some kind of white nationalist gets put on the front page of Google or at the top of Facebook for no reason, or, you know, the occasional congressional hearing, which doesn't really do anything either. Things aren't getting better. Things haven't been getting better. In fact, they're actively worse. I've been trying for weeks to figure out what X reminds me of. You open up the replies to a viral tweet and it's just mainly scammers and weirdos posting old memes you saw six months ago, trying to grind enough traffic to get a little bit of ad revenue so they can advertise dildos or cryptocurrency or porn or hentai mobile games. And then on the sidebar, you have all this terrible aggregated news full of fake stuff that isn't true, written by people you've never heard of. And the whole site just has this junky quality. And I, I've been trying to put my finger on what it reminds me of. And then I realized it's 9gag. One year ago this month, Elon Musk paid $44 billion and took what was considered one of the most influential websites maybe ever in human history and just turn it into 9gag. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Check out the other videos on my channel. Let me know if you want more of this. Let me know what you want more of in general. Uh, this video was cobbled together from a couple essays from my newsletter, Garbage Day. Go check that out too. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.